Roll back on your thumbs. Go. Very cool. So, from subtle movements to no movements, there we go. So we're going from the subtle movements of our choir last week on the, uh, the Tuesday and Thursday classes, I think, choir one and choir two. <laughs> we're going into no movements at all. So, But the most important part about the Zhang Zhang Gong or any stationary postures is the setup. It's so important. If you don't set it up right, right at the start, then you're fighting with it. It's like anything. If you don't, if you don't get, um, what's a nice, another ex example in the world? If you don't set it up right, or it can be like your food. If you eat the wrong food first before the second food, it affects the way the food's com com combining in your stomach. If you uh, set up your tires and everything, you have all the good suspension and all the steering good in your car, but you do the motor last, then it just doesn't matter how well it steers, you're just not going to have any power. So it's about getting the power first and then putting the power to the wheels second. So it's the same principle of, of how you set it up. Well, Qigong, static posture is very important. And we're standing in this posture. If you just pick your arms up like that and stand like that and bend your knees, everything's out of alignment to start off with before you even start. And so then what your body's doing while you're standing there, it's trying to correct all the things that you didn't do before you got there. So it's better to have it correct right at the start. So when you get into the posture and you sit inside the posture, it's already aligned already and you don't have to adjust anything and just relax. And you don't have to do anything else. And the body doesn't need to go chasing, trying to find the right position to be in because you already are in it. And it's, it's the same as any time when you set these exercises up, whatever exercise you set up, whatever exercise you set up, it's about setting it up perfect to start off with. Now, there'll be minor adjustments in these postures. And you'll find when you're sitting in this posture, this is from the Bhagwan Jin. You're standing in that posture. And there could be slight adjustments because you'll feel in your shoulder, you know, oh, there's something not quite right with your shoulder. And you drop your shoulder slightly. And it could down just, just centimetres, well, it's not even centimetres, millimetres. Or you might want to move your elbow down, just slightly down. And as soon as you move it, you go, yeah, that's better there. Or you might have to lower the hand, the bottom hand down. I'm doing it subtly. I'll show you a big move. It looks like that. Or I'm doing that. Or I'm moving my hand up slightly. There'll be slight adjustments you make. But when in time, when you know what it is, you put your hand up and it just goes straight into the place and it just, and it just sinks into the space because you know where it is. That comes from the practice. But to start off with, your body's adjusting, but the idea is to try and get it in the right place to start off with. We're not talking about the arms, though. We're talking about getting that leg in the right place, trying to get the foot in the right place, trying to get the, the knee, hip all lined up, the spine, hip lined up before we put our hands up. So we've got to get the foundation of the house built. And you know the old, the old analogy, if you build your house on shaky foundations. So we're trying to have the foundations perfect so we can build a very beautiful structure on top of it. And we know if the foundations are a bit rough, no matter how much you try and adjust it, adjust the house on top, it doesn't fix what's going on in the bottom. You need to do that first to start off with. So that's what I'll say about that. So we're going to do tree hugging just for us. We'll do, um, we'll do double starts. We'll, we'll, well, you are inspired me, Mark. We'll do a double start. So just do two. We won't do three. You can do three if you want. I'm just going to do a double. Bring your knees out to the side. Knees out above the toes. So the knees above the toes. Get to this position. Tuck your pelvis first. Tuck your pelvis. Good. Bring your chin back. Now, when you tuck your pelvis under, remember, relax. Now we also know is to bring up your choir to the top part. Lift it up. Put your fingers on it if you like and just raise it up. And then relax. And then let the bottom hang down underneath the top part of your pelvis. Let it hang down. You might as well add that piece to it. Now that we know that one. Good. So that one part, bring your chin back. Hang from your head string. Staying on your kidney points. You can grip your toes into the ground and then relax your toes. Good. Then think of your knees. Relax your knees. Relax your hip joints. Spine. Think of a head string stretch. So think of stretching all your vertebrae. Leave them expanded, then relax. Leave them expand, then relax so afterwards. Make sure whenever you tuck your pelvis underneath, you always tuck it and then you relax underneath it and you let the, the legs hang down. But don't tuck it under and hold it there. You've got to let the tension go. Good. So now our hands just face towards the crown. And when we pick up the hands, we come straight to the front. When we bring the hands up, most important part, turn your elbows down. Good. So go back, put your hands straight, and then bring your hands down again. Now, this time, when you bring it up, try not to pick up your shoulders at all. 
So you leave your shoulders completely motionless and you just pick up your arms. Yeah, that's better. Let them float up. Good. And just your elbows, roll your elbows down, which brings your hands around. Very good. And that's the posture. Good. Good. Bring your chin back slightly. Bring this back slightly and then relax. Very good. Now have your elbows where they are so they're not down this way, they're not close to your body, and they're not up in the air, they're halfway between the two of them, they're sitting there like that. Very good. Good. Now you'll feel tension in your ankles, you'll feel tension in your feet, you could feel tension in your thighs as well, you could feel tension in your shoulders holding your arms up, and just acknowledge that the tension's there, and just let it go. The best you can. And then come back just to being present to the whole body as one piece. So get your mind to just be aware of the whole body as one piece, not, a, not an arm or a leg or a pain in one place. Just acknowledge the whole body as one piece and just be aware of the one piece at the same time. And that's it, good. Now bring your awareness to your feet and your kidney points connecting to the ground. Then bring your awareness to your head string into yang. And then bring your awareness to both heaven and earth and the body at the same time. Good. And then just be aware of it and do nothing else. Now, if you've got your eyes open, be aware of what you can see in front of you. Whether it's the wall or whether it's the screen, it doesn't matter what it is, be aware of that. And look to the wall behind the screen or behind your computer and be aware of the wall. Good. And then be aware of you being in the room, whatever size room it is, you being inside the whole area of the room. So the area of the room is you and you're in the middle of it and you're heaven and earth. So be aware of the whole thing as one piece again. The room, you, heaven and earth. And just let your mind be quiet. Now let your awareness or your consciousness go out through your third eye, go out past what you can see on the other side of the wall. Go further out. Go around the back of you, past the wall, outside the building. And even if you're up in a third, four-story building, just go out into the space around the building. Good. And I want you to go out, say, 50 metres from where you are. So that'll go outside of your house, unless you have a rather large house. Go out 50 metres out all the way around. It'll be onto the street, could be on the street, there'll be backyard of p other people's places. And just hold that whole space, be con feel that conscious space, and then feel you. And you're one of part of all of that space is just you as well. Good. And then connect you to heaven and earth. And have heaven and earth and the conscious space one piece. And just let your mind be quiet. Just be aware of it. Don't think about it, just be aware of it.
Very cool. And because we haven't been doing this for a while, I don't want to hold you in this posture too long. So I want you to bring your hands, turn your hands over. So you, and you can practice this when we finish the class as well if you want to do it longer. Palms ground, slide your hands back. And then push your hands down. And it's like returning all the chi back into the dantian. So you're bringing all that part of the consciousness and you're bringing that all into your lower dantian. Yeah, push it into the dantian. Slowly straighten your legs. And then step back out of the posture. Very good. And at this time, I just want you to just shake your legs out a little bit. Take the tension out. Very cool. So you can imagine what happened then just Mark, so the breath of heavens, <laughs> the breath of heaven came back to me while I was standing at that point. It didn't blow, I just, if the consciousness came back about it. Because there's a famous saying in the, in the monastery school about um, being guided by the push of heaven's finger. I just love that terminology, being guided by the push of heaven's finger. And I remember my teacher talking about like uh, a string hanging down from God's hand and it's in the top of your head and it's, it's, it's walking you around from your head string. You make the choices where you go, but God comes with you with you. But there's a little bit of a guide goes on with the finger, the push of heaven's finger. Now we, now we have been guided by the breath of heaven through the wind as well, through the energy and the motion of the wind. So I just added that piece to it to understand that and it's very cool. And that came to me while I was standing there, by the way when I was having a quiet mind <laughs> it wasn't that quiet well it was peaceful but not quiet so I want to do a different start we're going to we did the bug one gentlemen so we'll go back into that posture because it's a, it's a very cool posture it's one of the standing on one leg postures we go to the left side first so when we do this the setup for this exercise so because that's what it looks like it's really easy to do that palms one palms facing to the ground and one palm facing towards heaven and you step forward but we'll do the proper setup right from the start because we know the transition how it works we'll go from the start so when we're standing in the posture and we set it up we set up our kidney points we tuck our pelvis underneath and relax set our spine put our chin back look without looking straight ahead we stand there and then we're going to move to one side in this case we're going to move on to the right leg um, I'm going to left going to move on to our left leg you're going to move on to your left leg all the weight goes to the left leg and as you do that, the hand comes up. Your left hand comes up like that. Yep. And then as you bring up the right leg, the right leg and the hand come up at the same time, to both palms are facing up, and as you step forward, heel goes down, and then your toe goes down, and then you turn both hands. They're both facing up, and then one goes up, and it looks like a movement like that. So it looks like screws up and comes that way. And when you're doing that, don't move your shoulders. Just move your arms and then let the shoulders slowly rise. The hands rise first. The hands are rising, the shoulders are coming because of the, the hands are coming up because of the, the, the elbow string and the wrist strings pulling your arm up. The other elbow string and wrist string pulling your elbow down, letting your elbow go down. It's not coming from your, from your shoulder. And as it brings these two up, the shoulder comes up because of these two strings, not because you're pulling your shoulder up. It comes up because of the strings come up and then the shoulder comes up and the shoulder's hanging off these two strings. The shoulder has not got, there's no pressure on the shoulder to bring the hand up. And no matter even how high you get it, these two strings, the elbow string, the elbow string and the wrist string, are holding their arm up, not your shoulder. Yeah, and they just sort of hang on it. Yeah, like that. That's good. Okay, so we'll go back and we'll set that up again. That's what I mean about setting the exercise up right from the start. So back into the posture on the kidney points. Move to the side and then you just feel the, sh the weight shift is just all the weight goes on to the, to the left side. You feel it move across. As it moves across, we turn and the hand comes up. Yeah, okay. Then pick up your right foot. Hand comes up, two palms up, step out, heel, then the toe. Then it turns, one goes up, one turns down. And let feel the, the strings pulling your arm up. Good. And then you can find the posture. 
And if you need to adjust your arm slightly, you adjust it. I just had to adjust my shoulder here. I had to move it out slightly. It was, it was locked inside. I had to move it slightly. Just adjust the pilot posture slightly to where it feels like it's all relaxed. Connect the little finger, the heart and small intestine finger, with the small intestine finger on the other hand so you feel the connection through the back of your arm. Cross your shoulders and back up the other side. So you have these two fingers connected right through so the whole body's connected through that point. Good. Bring the hand down. As it comes down, then change, bring the foot in. Change the weight. As we go across the centre and we change the weight to the other side, the hand comes up, palm comes up. It comes up as we go across, and as we go in across, and as we turn, that turn is what brings the hand up. So we go across, turn, the hand comes up. It's the turn that brings the hand up. It's the, the knee string bringing that foot up, brings the hand up. Stepping forward, heel, toe, and then once we're onto that posture, and then turning. The hands turn slowly. Wrist string, elbow string brings the arm up. Holding the posture. Just relax your shoulders. Now you're looking at your hand, you're looking into heaven. Look past your hand and look into heaven, past your hand. Good. So bring the hand down. Now lower the strings. Lower the wrist string and the elbow string down. Lower that down. Not your shoulder. Lower that down. And at the same time, bring the foot in. Then change the weight as your weight goes across. And then as you turn, the hand comes up. Perfect. Step up with the, the knee string of the other foot. Knee string brings the hand up. Both palms up. Step out then turn. Now you might need to adjust it at the top. Throw me adjusting a bit. It's called a mosquito, buzzing around my head. down. As you bring the arm down, just bring the elbow string down first, then bring the foot back. Change weight. Very good. Just rest there. So I was just tested then for my ability to stay focused and calm. I have a mosquito buzzing around my ear. Nobody likes mosquitoes buzzing around the ear, and I've got one just to test if I can stay focused or not. And if it bites me, I, I don't like mosquitoes biting me, by the way. So, so this is my test. I'm back the other side. Now from the center. As we go across, we pinch them across first. As we turn, then the hand comes up. Yeah, so it goes across first. The turn brings the arm up. Yeah. We step the foot in as we bring that knee string, pulls the knee up and steps forward. As that knee gets pulled forward, a hand comes up with the knee. Yeah, stepping heel toe, and then the hands go. One goes up, one goes down.
at it and then bring your hand down. So lower it down from the elbow strings, wrist strings. Bring the foot in. Knee string brings the knee up. Put it down. Hand goes down. Change the weight to the center. Very good. I want to do another exercise. We'll go back to the Zhang Zhang Gong, do another one, yeah? So it's all about the setup. So this is what we're talking about today is the the setups for Mark. There's my white butterfly just flying past this morning, by the way. <laughs> so the setup's all about how important the setup is to any posture. And the same with doing wave hands, even simple doing wave hands over the, over the lake. This is nothing if you don't have the body set up before you start. If I just stand there like that in a bad posture, straight legs, uh, shoulders, and I just do that, nothing happens. But as soon as I put my weight on my kidney points and I put the, the energy of the, the well points of my toes, that's the well points of the very, very last points of the meridians on the edge of the toes. They're called well points, like as a, a well as in sink into the ground well. That, that sort of well, W-E-L-L. -L the well points as soon as I connect with those points I connect them with my feet I bend my knees slightly to take the tension out of the knees I tuck my pelvis forward and relax I pull my chin back I hang from my head string I relax my spine I feel my spine expanding I sit in that posture now as soon as I do that now with the with the wave hands the whole thing's just changed I don't pick up my shoulders I let the arms float up now the whole posture is a totally different exercise just because of the setup and this setup is probably one of the most important things we do in Qigong, and I probably don't, I don't probably emphasize it enough how important the stance is because I just do it anyway without thinking about it, only because of practice, not because I'm some miracle person. <laughs> it's just practice, and I just know how to stand in that place where it sits in that space. But so it's really, really interesting you bringing it up today, Mark, about the triple horse stance because the triple horse stance, the most important part, is what's happening with your pelvis. When you're standing out, I'll go out to triple. When you're standing out in that posture and you're sitting in that posture, the most important part is the pelvis tuck forward and then relax the pelvis and then pull up your, your two pelvic muscles, pull them up and you'll feel them rise, pull them up yeah, and feel your leg hanging down underneath that. And see, it'll change it straight away as you do that. And it's all about whatever you're doing in that posture. Now relax inside that posture. And have all the weight on the kidney point still. You'll feel the weight on the outside of your toes a little bit and on the outside of your foot because the feet are going to be pushing out slightly because you're going to be pushing the knees out. So you get a bit of outward push, that's okay. You can sit in that posture. And it's all about the alignment. But as I say, if you don't tuck if you sit here like this and you have your bum sticking out, everything that's going on here stops at your waist. It doesn't go through. It won't go through your dime wire. It'll get stuck here until you take your pelvis forward and relax. And then all of a sudden go, and it shoots up your spine. Cool. So this is all about the, the, the setup. We'll do a different exercise, we'll do a different setup. Which one do we do? Um, so we do a one-legged one. We'll stay with the one-legged ones, I think. Yeah, we'll do we'll do plain loop. See, I did it to start off, but we'll go back to that. It was a cross-up between that and brush knee, but I think we'll do plain the loot. So the same thing again. So we set up. We're gonna step. So we're standing double weighted. Yeah, we've already done the setup. We're sitting, we have knees are bent, sitting on the front part of our feet, pelvis tucked, chin slot. Back, we we'll stay there, and then all we're going to do is we're going to turn, but we're going to pinch them across, and then we're going to turn. Yeah, and as we do that, as we come across and turn, now both hands come around. See, the hands are both moving together, so you're, you're not doing anything with the hands yet. You're pinching them across, turn, the hands come around the front, and then as we finish turning, then we comes it comes around, and then the knee comes up. Yeah, the knee comes up to step and then step down. So that's the order of it. it goes pendulum first, rotation, knee string. And they run, and they follow on to each other. Pendulum across. With the, I'm going to say stop, but normally you don't stop. But understand the, the principle of the three parts. Pendulum across, stop, rotation, stop, knee string, stop. Yeah. But of course, in theory, we're going to go pendulum, rotation, knee string. But they're in that order. They, none of them overlap each other. There is a, they can run and one stops and the other one starts directly after it stops, but there isn't any stop you don't see, but they are touching each other. So there's no gap between them. They just go into a pendulum, rotation, and then back to knee comes up. 
and so they'd understand the principle of that so we'll try that now when the knee comes up of course the hands come up at the same time so pendulum across stop turning knee comes up and it brings as soon as the knee comes up the hands come up knee comes up hands come up it's the knee and the hands all coming up together and then as the knee goes down the hands turn around and come and the hands turn down as the foot goes down it's the same in tai chi you do the same thing if the foot goes down the hands come down yep so we'll try that again we'll do it as one piece pendulum across rotation knee string comes up hands come up foot goes down as the foot goes down the hands turn that's it good and then stop now in this posture adjust it slightly you might have to bring your chin back slightly because you feel your chin's not in the right place yeah just your chin just your hands yeah you might have to adjust your pelvis slightly and then relax you might have to turn around slightly because you remember your pelvis should be facing the front foot you might be facing this way you need to turn around slightly face that position so you're all facing with this foot's facing this way but my whole body's facing that way yeah and you're standing in the posture being aware of the the hands position of the hands you might have to relax your hand relax your hands good and then bring your hands in as you bring your hand down remember you lower it down elbow strings with strength you lower it down as you lower it down it picks up the knee string and it puts it down and then you put it down and then your hand and your foot go down together center weight move to one side rotate first knee comes up with the hands stepping heel and then when you put your heel down the hands come down and sit in the posture and you rest your shoulders because you pick your hands up and then rest they come up like that and then come down to rest looking straight ahead perfect and come back again remember pick your knee up well the arms the hands go down the knee comes up at the same time to the center very cool there you go and we'll rest there that's the other side so you can practice those ones as well so as you see that the, today well, obviously we're doing setups today and how important how crucial the setup is the most important part is how you set up before you start the exercise and as i say that's even the same with any exercise you do it's about having the posture correct to start off with and everything's open all the meridians as soon as we do that all the meridians are open everything's open so when you're moving your arms around they're already open our biggest thing when we're moving is not closing them off so when we're moving the arms or when we're moving anything is to make sure the energy keeps moving all the time so we don't have any blockages so we don't move our arm across too close and then we shut the, the energy down or we bend our arm or we have our arm straight we don't want to lose any of that movement of chi by anything we do because we've set it up it's flowing perfectly through the body and you don't want to do anything to disrupt that so by keeping everything relaxed everything slightly bent everything moving then the energy just keeps moving all you're doing is directing it differently but the energy the field doesn't change you're just directing it a different way and so the whole body never never loses the feeling the difference between this exercise and embrace the mountain and what's happening inside the energy of the body is the same it's just going through different meridians and then floating silk hands well it's not floating silk hands this is um geez i've got to think of what it's called and that exercise the same thing changes nothing changes the arms just move the same in all of them the body's moving the same the energy hasn't changed and then the one of the secrets of course is to notice if your body energy does change inside your body when you're sitting in a posture and you do something different and you're turning around and you go oh okay that's now i've got a blockage somewhere because there's something happening in my hip and it's about letting the hip relax to do that and so you'll be aware of so the energy's moving all the time and it all got to do with the posture to start off with there you go now keep you busy for the day be cool and uh be good out there be, be careful out there on the flat earth so if i throw a ball i just got to throw it across the earth to you mark i don't have to throw it around in a big circle i just got to throw it straight across to you <laughs> the, the, the funniest thing i just i just keep that keep going back to this because i think it's a ma ma it's a magic that being an astronomer this will probably be that the one thing that that'll be the hardest thing to hold because you have you 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 study the stars so and study the alignments and the planets and everything so it's probably going to be more confronting to you than anybody else 
And it's going to be really hard just to keep an open mind without watching your brain <laughs> try to disprove it. <laughs> I just want to fly the way you message me anyway, and you'll see what I mean when you watch it. You'll, you'll, you'll catch yourself, oh, that's not true. <laughs> I love that. I know you're I know you're a very flexible person, you're open, but it's uh, just because it's your subject, it'll be a tough one. <laughs> uh, I'm with you. I'm with you, my friend. I'm with you. <laughs> Beautiful. I see you on Thursday. You can let me know on Thursday what happens. <laughs> Watch your own process around it. Go. Cool. 